Greetings, I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to episode number 39 of Experience Photography. My fellow photographer, my very good friend, partner in this, and editor for this episode is Matt Rich. He's the inspiring beam of light that directs us in every sense and every purpose. He makes all of this vlog project operate. Are you there, my friend? This thing's not working. Oh! No, it is. <laughs> I love it. In our most recent past episode, we discussed making conspicuous choices so that we're not captives of the time bandits, nor of the credit card machine. <laughs> we established we should use the camera as an expressive tool rather than a mm, stunning bookend. In this episode, We'll discuss a principle of light that will benefit all and every constructed light condition. That's the inverse square law. This important fundamental information is crucial support that the element we will eventually lead to more episodes on lighting, light, techniques, electronic flash, and it may become uh, the important reference that you really want to save this one. Now, remember, the K key will pause the video so that you may get a screenshot of the charts if you need to. Tap K once, and it will resume playing again. Now, this is so dang important. To all photographers, we better we better dive into our scientific discoveries today. The principle we'll be addressing today is called the inverse square law. Now, it was set forth in the year 1604. How come we're just hearing about it? Well, the astronomer Johannes uh, Kepler, in his proposition number nine, in his very first book. Take a peek at old Kepler. Well, this is not actually a photograph, not in the 1600s. But he postulated that in science, an inverse square law is any scientific law stating that a specified physical quantity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. There you have it. All done. Did you get that? <laughs> well, me neither. Uh, let's let, let's go a little deeper. If we look at this, I is equal to intensity, and D is equal to distance. We'll put the expression on the screen. Uh, probably it won't make any difference, but Take a peek. In photography, or stage lighting, or any circumstance that uses artificial lights, any that uses artificial lights, the inverse square law is used to determine the amount of fall off. The light goes and then it, it drops. This chart indicates if the subject moves, or is moved, from one foot from the light to two feet, or the difference in illumination on a subject as it moves, or is moved, closer or further from the light source. For a quick approximation, it's enough to remember that doubling the distance reduces illumination one quarter. Or in other words, it's only half the illumination. Eee! The entire dynamic base is based on the factor of 1.4, 1 
which is the square root of 2. Now, the f-stop chart shown here, we lose two, eh, eh, two f-stops of light. Not just one, two. The distance was doubled, and we ended with only a quarter of the amount of light. That is the inverse square. The light falling on the first subject in a still life setup or on stage, if it's illuminated at f22, this reveals that the light fall off is immensely rapid. This is a second witness of why subject matter further from the light source falls into shadow so desperately rapidly. The second element, one further away from the light, is now at f11. And the third element, double the distance, is now clear down to 5.6. Nothing happened. The light stayed the same. These three elements, and all of a sudden f-stop went from 22 to 5.6. You got to pay attention. Now, here's the footage by percent chart. You double the distance, you open up two. The amplitude coverage chart. This is the uh, physics of the thing. It's the law. You must figure it out how to make things better if you don't want, you know, these huge, dark, hulking shadows foreclosing over your stunning, beautiful idea. All righty. Here's a setup for the demo. Let's take a look at this little uh, piece of video that I shot here on my tabletop. You know, I don't have 20 feet <laughs> in my studio to photograph a herd of people in my office. So, I went tabletop. Now, the light, si <laughs> or the light source at the right side of the picture is a, a bright LED light. And I just put a sheet of napkin over it to uh, unify the beam a bit. So it would be a little smoother looking. Now, the 3 by 5 inch cards on the tabletop reveal a calibrated unit of distance. I couldn't use feet. All right. I don't have that much room. But one card, two card, four card. Yeah, four units. Now, figure number one shows a little fireman. Yep. He's model number one, and he's one unit from the light. The exposure, according to my meter, was 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at f16. <laughs> Shoot, he's correctly exposed. Now, figure number two shows a plumber. He's two units away, two cards away from the light source. The exposure, according to my meter, was the same 1 1 25th of a second, but now, instead of F16, it's F8. We skipped 11, went right to F8, and at F8, he's correctly exposed. Now, the distance from the light had doubled to two units, but we had to, the exposure increased four times so, two full f-stops. F16, past 11, to 8. Now, this, here comes the dynamic part. Figure number three shows us, uh, as you witnessed in the uh, little video clip, the poor mailman. He's four units from the plumber. Uh, therefore, we had to open up to f 4.0 for a correct exposure on Mr. Mailman. This proves the inverse square law to be correct. It does matter, but it doesn't matter what unit of measure is. Feet, 
yards, inches. It's double the units, quadruple the exposure. Point number two. Hey, did you notice? Did you notice the light fall off? If figure four reveals how drastic the fall off really is. Ew. You'll observe in figure one through three how the background shadows opened. Yes, yeah. The further away the light source is from the subject, the contrast decreases. So, if you want less harsh shadows in your still lifes, your stage productions, whatever, move the light further away. Figure number five proves the fact it's all about fall off. If you're having problems with the exposure triangle, please refer back to our episode number three where we explain all of that information. Slower shutter speeds, higher ISO, hey, pick your poison. Huh? You don't like your poison options? Oh, picky, picky, picky. Last option. If you don't like that, get a bigger light source. Not a little four inch lamp. Try a, uh, you know, a 20 inch soft light. Illuminate your still life with that. Yeah, that'll work. Of course, you know how you now have an exposure problem because the light gets further away. The exposure triangle to the rescue. Da, 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 da. Figure number six shows a 20 inch lightweight, high powered light. It's a HSK A2 artist light box. Yeah, it's from, uh, I got mine at uh, Amazon. Nice ad. Amazon, call me. Or if you're photographing automobiles, Maybe you need a 24-foot light source with 24 2,000-watt flash heads tucked inside. That'll do the trick. It will. Number seven, look at that car. Yes, sir -y. Yeah, you get 20,000 watts. <laughs> Bound to figure out something. Now, in figure eight, that might be the group. Uh, maybe a wedding, maybe a birthday or a reunion. What? It's a whatever shot, whatever you got going. Well, you just lost a bunch of light out at the edges. They're going to be darker. So what do you do? Move the light back. Yeah. Now you know the secret to lighting with artificial lights. Huh? Outside? Well, it's hard to double that 93 million miles from the sun. I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. Uh, so I use high-powered flash. That's the, that's the answer. How far back? <laughs> hey, folks, it's all f-stops. You have your light set. You need one more stop at the edges. Move the light from 11 feet to 16 feet. Now you're cured. You got an extra stop. Pretty cool. You need two stops? Well, not in this uh, demonstration, but it makes sense. It's all F stops. Go back 22 feet. The light becomes broader. You've got it covered. The inverse law, square, square law, is satisfied. It's just a matter of wattage uh, and maybe some power. Maybe you need big flash, bigger light, but it's true and it works. If you were in rows behind one another, yeah, second row is going to be dark. Well, move the light back. Add more wattage 
uh, maybe you have to put your flash in manual and figure it out. Oh, darling, I can figure another vlog coming on. <laughs> You're going to have to do something. Well, our time together has flashed by. And Matt and I hope you've learned a million watts from today's vlog. So, if you will, please subscribe. Share with your friends. Hey, hey, give us a big thumbs up. We need that. Tinkle that little bell for notification. If it helps you, it helps us. Leave us a comment. If you got a problem, leave us a request. Heck. I'm glad to address whatever you need. So, until we meet again, well, I toss my tassel to you. And Dr. Science here is now pronouncing you graduated. Cheerio!